I salute the work of Skills for Change in bringing together this gathering of engineers. I'm impressed also with the collaborators, the several bridging programs, and others that are here today to think pragmatically about ways to enhance the prosperity of our community. The influx of highly trained foreign-born professionals represents a tremendous opportunity to meet business needs. These highly trained foreign-born professionals are joining us with professional skills, fluency in many languages, a great work ethic, and an enthusiasm to be a productive member of Ontario society. Agree? Yeah. <laughs> I would like to speak about a vital aspect of the Ontario economy. How can we make sure that professionals who are trained outside Ontario and Canada do not face unexpected or unreasonable hurdles in their fields so that they can help grow the provincial economy. So I'll speak about engineering specifically. Then I'll turn to the broader context and talk about why I believe the issue of fair licensing is so important. But first, let me tell you about the work of the Fairness Commissioner. By the way, this Fairness Commissioner and this legislation was copied by the province of Manitoba. So Manitoba now has a Fairness Commissioner. Copied by the province of um, Nova Scotia, they have a review officer, different title, same um, mandate. Copied by the province of Quebec, and as you know, Quebec do things in a different way. They have a complaints commission, a little different to the work of this office. In 2006, the government of Ontario passed the Fair Access to Regulated Professions Act. It requires regulated professions to have licensing that is fair, objective, impartial, transparent, or to quote exactly from the legislation, transparent, objective, impartial, and fair. So I'm working on long-term and institutional change. In other words, fairness, not quick fixes. I can tell you that regulators are making steady progress. They know that there is broad public support to do better by these highly trained immigrants who join us. And they know that they need to get on with it. So what have we learned or what have I learned about engineering? I'll give you back some of the information that maybe you already know. Membership in Professional Engineers, <coughs> Professional Engineers Ontario, or PEO, has climbed about 5% over the last four years. Interestingly, the proportion of internationally trained engineers has increased at a much higher rate, about 12%. For engineering technicians and technologists, the pattern is similar. <coughs> Total membership in the Ontario Association of Certified Engineering Technicians and Technologists went up by 11%. Internationally trained members went up by 14%. The numbers of applications to both professions have wavered over the last four years. But what I find interesting is that applications from internationally educated engineers and engineering techs have gone down. Perhaps 
That's because of the recession. Yeah, maybe they're choosing to go out west. Certainly, we know that immigration has declined. Maybe it has something also to do with economic conditions in immigrant uh, countries of origin. Engineers come mostly from China, India, Iran, Bangladesh. Engineering technicians and technologists come mostly from India, the Philippines, and Pakistan. PEO does a very good job with its website. It contains all the information an applicant needs to register in the profession. We recommend that PEO start an online application and follow-up system. This would add to or replace the current manual system involving mail and the fax. This change will speed up the process. We also recommend to PEO that they provide the rationale for its Canadian work experience requirements. And we are interested on that. This should include a detailed explanation of the unique qualities of engineering in Canada that justify the experience requirements. Second, the engineering technicians and technologists. This regulatory body also makes it possible for applicants to start the application process online. We, rec we recommend that it beef up its website to make things easier and faster for applicants. Immigration and emigration, either temporary or permanent, give Canada people with needed skills. If Canada is not attractive, well, those skills can go someplace else. Canada needs to adjust to new skills requirements and the global competition, competition for talent, in order to have a more innovative, knowledge-based economy. An essential part of this is the ability to retain those who've joined us and to retain all highly educated immigrants. So how is that to be done? Canada has done well in comparison with other countries in attracting permanent immigrants who are post-secondary graduates. Despite this, many recent immigrants have not been successful financially. You know the data, you see the stats. They are underused, underemployed, underpaid. Last year, World Education Services Canada pointed out this disconnect. Less than one quarter of employed and university educated immigrants are working in their fields of study. Less than one quarter are working in their fields of study. The Conference Board of Canada has estimated, I'm telling you all this, but I think you know all this, <laughs> but you're hearing it new ways today, in a new setting, at Mars. The Conference Board has estimated that the cost of not recognizing the qualifications of well-educated immigrants is between $4 billion and $6 billion annually. Canada's ability to hang on to high-skilled workers, both Canadian-born and foreign-born, is a challenge. We used to talk about the brain drain. But nowadays, in a mobile society, some, of, some observers speak about the brain exchange or the brain circulation. But there are some positive developments. The 
Conference Board again. Released a study that found that newcomers are having a major impact on innovation and performance in areas such as research, culture, business, and global commerce. At least 36% of an estimated 1,800 Canada research chairs are foreign born even though immigrants are just 20% of the Canadian population. And this is an important fact for us to keep in mind as to where these highly skilled individuals are finding themselves. 36% of 1,800 Canada research chairs, the top thinkers in top places, are foreign born. So this is an encouraging sign. It's important that Ontario hone its competitive edge. Also vital is unlocking immigrants' potential to make a positive economic contribution to Ontario. So is the willingness of regulated professions in Ontario to improve their licensing so that all qualified individuals can practice their professions. There must be a willingness of regulated professions in Ontario to improve their licensing so that all qualified individuals can practice their professions. And this is the basis of all work. So let me wrap up. As internationally educated engineers, I think it's important to say that you are welcome, valued, and important. You play a significant role in the innovative and thriving society that we all want to create. Fairer access to the professions is a key to a robust economy. The Fair Access Law outlines what Ontario regulatory bodies must do. Individuals have joined us, or delegations I should say, have joined us from different parts of Europe, from Germany, from Denmark, from France, to see how this legislation is working. And so we know that in Ontario we've set out on a path that is groundbreaking and innovative. And so the Fair Access Law outlines what Ontario regulators must do. And I must say that they are implementing the recommendations. They are planning with us or plan for continuous improvement is bearing fruit. Individuals will have faster, fairer access to the professions. So let me end by congratulating you, Judy, for getting me here. I want to congratulate Skills for Change. I want to congratulate, I see some of my rise of friends here and others who are involved in bridging programs. I think it's an important time to discuss this after the night before, budget the night before, and some of you are still looking at the budget, at the lines, to see where we are heading as a country and what is happening within our province. And I think it is timely that this gathering is taking place and for your focus on prosperity in our province. Valuing and leveraging the skills of all its residents is essential to expanding the Ontario economy. Merci beaucoup, mes amis.